So hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Unpacking Possibility. I'm your host, Tracy Stein. And as always, I am so happy to be here with you. It's been a little while, but you know, I've been busy. I'm sure you have too. But today I'm really excited to talk about this topic because I think it will be helpful. It might not be pleasant, but we're going to talk about narcissists and more specifically, why you keep attracting so many of them and how you can stop doing that, or at least change the parameters of some of your relationships. So I've lit my little dragon's blood candle here. You know, why not? At minimum, it's symbolic and maybe a little bit more. I'm burning a little Palo Santo uh, to set the mood. And so uh, we can kind of clear the air a little bit. If you have a little sage or something or sea salt, you can do that as well. Or just kind of take a deep breath because you know that if you've been dealing with a lot of really self-absorbed people lately or throughout your life, they can be so draining. You can feel like you're walking around with all of the stuff that they really just can't hold, right? And so what they do is they put it on you. Either they make their stuff your responsibility or they make you feel responsible for making them feel every which way or, um, you know, or you're just dealing with holding all of their emotion, all of their blame or whatever it is that's going on for them, right? And to some extent in all of our relationships, we always carry our own stuff. And there are times when we put it on other people. That's not what I'm talking about. But what I'm talking about today is people who really are profoundly and essentially self-absorbed, People are either useful to them or not useful. And in fact, what I'll do before we begin talking about the reasons why you keep attracting narcissists is I just want to clarify what I mean. Now, all of us, just so you know, have some degree of narcissism, and it's important to actually have what is called healthy narcissism. Healthy narcissism, ironically, is usually um, somewhat insufficient in people who tend to attract a lot of narcissists. And the reason for this is that healthy narcissism reminds us that we have to take care of ourselves, that it's not only important, but it's a good thing. And we can still be good people if we take good care of ourselves. And sometimes taking care of ourselves means saying no, right? It's narcissist's least favorite word to hear from anyone else. Um, Narcissists, you probably think when you hear that term of the, the classic grandiose narcissist, the somebody who's the person who's going to sweep into a room and need to dominate the whole space. All the attention is something that they feel like they really need on them. Um, they may spend a whole bunch of money and energy on only having the best clothes and only having the best jewelry or only having the best cars and so forth, whether or not it's really affordable. It's a whole other issue. Um, but the idea is that everything they do is all about shoring up this ego, this idea of themselves as the best, right? Now, some narcissists, the more grandiose types, you may never see the part of them that actually feels really um, lesser than or not enough or is so afraid of looking like they're anything less than the best because then they would feel like they have no worth at all. You may never see that in some people. And in other narcissists, you may see that they can actually be quite depressed or quite self-deprecating at times. They may not dress particularly well, but there's this kind of... Um, not so subtle conceit there. And we can be narcissistic about anything, right? Um, in general, but also we can think we are the most beautiful butterfly in the entire world um, or that we need to be, or that we have to be the smartest, or we have to be the wealthiest, or they have to be the most successful and so forth. And a lot of times what happens is if somebody can't achieve that on their own, they may find kind of trophy partners and so forth who they can brag about and, and kind of bask in their glow, right? So that's kind of the flavor of a narcissist who is more than just somebody who can be a little self-absorbed or more than somebody who happens to like nice things or is a little flashy. That's not what I'm talking about. 
as I talk a little bit more, you'll kind of get a sense of what I mean. Um, but often narcissists really need to self-enhance. And what I mean by that is you might talk about, you know, how you got a raise and then they're going to have to top this and maybe talk about how well they're doing at their job. And they might, you know, make something up or they might just exaggerate what's good about what they're doing or what's going on for them. They may kind of believe that they're actually at the top of their game, whether or not they are. Um, narcissists are not afraid, honestly, the ones I've encountered are not typically afraid to lie or exaggerate, to make themselves look better. But again, it's all about that. Um, most of them are really only interested in people when they feel like those people are useful to them in some way. They either make them look better or they have something that's interesting or that they want, or they can advance their career in some way and so forth. You're starting to get the picture, right? I know you are. Um, and if you're listening to this episode, you probably have had um, more experiences than you like of this kind, right? Um, as I mentioned, um, narcissists often need to be better than. So, you know, they're going to really have to best you in some way, whether just by what they're saying, or they may be overly competitive with you for reasons that seem baffling, um, or it seemed baffling before listening to this podcast. Um, but if they can't best someone, what they might do is try to affiliate with them, associate with people who have the things that they want, and again, try and bask in that glow. Now, um, you probably notice if you've ever been involved in a relationship with somebody who's very narcissistic, that they rarely, if ever, apologize. They'll usually only apologize under duress or if they think they're going to lose a relationship and they can't afford to. And even then, it might kind of just ring kind of hollow. It's usually not a very sincere apology, right? You know who I'm talking about. Um, Narcissists can be really aggressive or vindictive if they feel that you've challenged them or shamed them in some way, even if that hasn't been your intention. Even if 25 other people would say, oh, I didn't interpret what this person said that way, right? But they can get really aggressive, even if they've just been the world's most charming person. So as I'm talking, think about the people in your life that um, you have worked so hard to be a good friend to, or a good partner to, a good child to, a good sibling to. But it's just, you know, they can be so charming, but you kind of don't know when it's going to switch. Um, narcissists tend to really be most interested in what they themselves are saying. So they might be talking a lot or talking over you or interrupting you or looking kind of glazed <laughs> and off in the distance when you actually try to say something. Now, again, I want you to think of narcissism on a continuum, right? Somebody can be a lovely person generally, but be kind of self-absorbed or be not the most self-aware conversationalist. But what you're looking for is a pattern of things and something that's been enduring, where it's kind of like, hmm, if I really had to rely on this person, could I? Maybe, but could I rely on them to see me as a human being and empathize with me? Probably not. Um, I'm going to tell you a funny story. One of the more narcissistic, one of the more narcissistic people I know, and that is saying something. <laughs> uh, I remember bragging about what an empathetic person they thought they were, and. In my mind, I thought that it was a joke because this is a, like somebody who completely is unaware of and uninterested in how other people feel or how they make them feel. But what you will find is that some narcissists are actually intellectually empathic. And what I mean by that is that they are able to kind of get a sense of what other people's reactions to them are or what. Um, you know, people are feeling only in the sense of so that they can manipulate them, so that they can get what they need from them. But there is not a genuine caring about how 
either how they, the narcissist affects other people or, you know, wanting to be more empathic. It's not there. Um, but I thought that was pretty funny because I thought, I'm not sure, <laughs> does this person not know? And sometimes it's it's a matter of that they just don't care. Um, so yeah, the it, other narcissists will be highly critical of people in their life if they think they might, quote, embarrass them. So you you probably haven't in general conversation heard the term narcissistic extension. If you've been in a lot of therapy or if you're a therapist, maybe you have. But that term refers to narcissist tendency to think of other people that are important to them and that they care about as extensions of themselves, right? The problem is, is that when you, the quote extension of that narcissist, disappoint them or that it feels like you make them look bad, right? So it's the partner who's going to criticize you if you gain an extra two pounds, or it's the parent who's going to be hypercritical about their kid's outfits or hairdos. It's the grandparent who is absolutely in love and brags about one grandchild who resembles them or who, you know, they're like, they they feel like they're their little twin and maybe ignores all the other grandchild children. Um, or they're just kind of, you know, less important or kind of annoying or not there, right? Because basically people are only potential mirrors for them or they're only potential ways of enhancing them. So they may feel like, oh, no, I really love this person, but it is the type of love that a narcissistic person can feel it is not the type of love that the people who take care of narcissists tend to feel, which is much more compassionate, much more thoughtful, much more thinking, oh, but how is this person feeling? How can I help them? That's not what we're talking about. Um, it might be the person who calls you, but only when they really need something. So they may talk your ear off for 45 minutes and then you start to share something and they've got to go. And I don't mean just once. I mean, it's kind of a pattern. Again, look at this in terms of patterns, not the things that we can all do somewhat sometimes. It's a matter of degree and consistency. Um, it's the person who is always in search of the bright, shiny object. So think of the person who dates, you know, is a serial dater, always looking for the next most um, exciting or beautiful, more beautiful or more exciting or more successful version of kind of the same person. Um, it's the person who has, you know, five partners in. 20 years, and they're all kind of a, an increasingly younger version of the same person. I would kind of be a little bit suspicious that that person might have something going on. Um, so again, healthy narcissism is the thing that is going to help you take care of you and notice when other people treat you in a way that kind of makes you feel diminished or where you're getting blamed for stuff that's always their stuff and not your stuff. Um, so in some cases we want to kind of bump up that healthy, I'm going to use self-esteem because that's a word more people are comfortable with, right? Especially the super nice, super caretaking people who tend to attract a lot of narcissists. So now we're going to get to why you, you lovely, compassionate, really good person who just wants to love somebody and be loved, right? Why you keep attracting narcissists at work or in your friendships, or in your relationships, and so forth. So just kind of keep a mental checklist here and see how many of these things resonate with you. So if you are known as a really caretaking person, a nice person, the most reliable person in the universe, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to attract a whole lot of people anybody who really wants to be taken care of, but especially people who want you to put their needs in front of yours, okay? If there's something exceptional about you, 
that would be very enhancing to someone else. You're gorgeous, you're brilliant, you're successful, or you know, you're extremely well liked in your community, you're super popular, whatever it is, you're gonna be a little more of a magnet. And you know what? Who doesn't appreciate those things about you? But again, think about that in terms of someone who loves that about you maybe a little more than they actually just like being with you. Um, if you place a high value on relationships, I'm going to tell you right now, that's a great thing. You're going to work really hard to sustain them, including being extra patient, extra caretaking, and so forth. Um, a magnet. You're a magnet. Um, if you believe relatedly that, um, or actually, if you invest heavily in people, which caretaking people tend to, you are probably going to believe generally and with the more narcissistic people in your life that even if they are only really lovely to you 10% of the time or 5% of the time, or in really extreme cases, maybe 1% of the time, you are going to believe that that is the real person and that person. And you are probably going to move heaven and earth trying to love that person enough to make that 5 or 10% more like 90%. You're going to believe that that compassionate person is just waiting to emerge. And I'm so sorry to tell you that if you've been doing this for years and that person still hasn't emerged, they're not really nearly as invested in that happening as you are. Um, you may also tend to view other people's motivations and emotions and intentions through a really personal lens. You know what? Almost all of us do. Pretty much all of us do. And the thing with that is if your lens is that people are essentially wonderful, and you know what? Most people are pretty good. And some people really are just amazingly good, amazingly thoughtful, wonderful friends, parents, partners, et cetera. But if you look at other people's motivations through your lens, you will do backflips trying to find the good reason why somebody keeps doing awful things or just thoughtless things or just self-centered things. because you will think that essentially at their core, they are like you. And that's not necessarily true. Again, we all have good days and bad days. But if somebody's quirks that you're trying to find the good reasons for or their bad days are most of the time, then it's not a quirk. And it's not a bad day. It's who they are. Um, I'm going to say something that's going to be a little provocative and it might smart a little. This, this one's a little hard to hear, again, especially for super nice people, because we're really invested in being super nice, super good people, right? And if you place a high value on being good and caring, and if you um, have in your mind paired or conflated being good with never saying no or being the most tolerant person in the world and the most caregiving and patient person in the world, um, you are going to feel like saying no means you are a bad person or you're a selfish person. Um, and you're going to remain in one-sided relationships. And I'm going to tell you related to that, if your fear is that you will look bad or selfish if you don't take care of you and if you say no to people who will keep coming to you're well because it's brimming over with with water um they will make you feel like you are bad and selfish because to them you will be if you even try and trim their supply down not even cut it off necessarily um it's really hard for people who are super caregiving and caretaking to um imagine that they can't heal another person by becoming even more loving and nurturing. Um, and in fact, actually one of the more narcissistic people I've ever met, 
and that saying something was it turned out to be one of the most effective teachers about narcissism, not just because they were teaching about narcissism, but because um, just, you know, this was a point this person was driving home is that you can't heal everybody. And honestly, you can't. Um, because all healing really comes from ourselves. It really does. Everybody else along the way can be um, a loving guide or a supportive friend or a supportive professional, but we can't do the healing for anybody else. It's just not how it works, right? And somebody who doesn't want to change, but wants you to keep doing everything for them and taking the blame when they do something wrong and so forth, they're going to make you feel like you're just a really bad person when you say no. So brace yourself. Um, the last thing I'm going to say about why it's so hard to not keep on attracting narcissists is because they are so attractive. They can be really engaging. They may themselves be very attractive or very smart or very successful right? They believe they are, and often they actually are, or they've invested a lot in that being true. Um, but they can also say the right things. And there are moments when they might mean it. They can be so charming, and that charm is extremely seductive, and it can make us continually put ourselves last. And I want you to think of this metaphor, because once you hear this, I don't think you will think about it the same way again. Going to a narcissist for genuine love, compassion, and support, like somebody who's pretty severely self-centered, it's like being thirsty, like dying of thirst. Going to a very self-centered, right? We could even take the word narcissism and put it to the side if it sounds too clinical, but if you expect a very narcissistic person, a very self-centered person, a person who lacks empathy and doesn't want to have it, if you keep going to that well, a dry well, or worse, a toxic well, somebody who's just going to manipulate you and make you feel bad more than they make you feel good, you're never going to be fully okay. You might not die, right? Because you'll get something from that well. But it's going to be like, you know, water that's sour. Or you can only get like a thimble full. You know how that feels. So again, going to a well that is within you, right? You have to take care of you to replenish your own well. It's going to be a lot more sustaining than, um, than going to somebody who can't fully care in a healthy way about somebody else. So sorry, because I know it's hard to hear. Um, I'm going to say something else that's hard to hear, right? You're going to be like, I'm never listening to this podcast again. But if you are somebody who really is identified with being that good person who takes care of everybody, um, being with someone who needs a steady stream of validation um, and soothing and accommodating, that's going to give you job security, right? You're getting some of the confirmation that you are such a good person. Related to your job security, self-absorbed people really do set the stage for you to keep on doing those things that you do really well. And you probably get a lot of positive feedback from other people for. Um, you're probably kind of guilt prone if you're somebody who attracts a lot of narcissists and that guilt is going to make you feel bad and it's going to make you bend over backwards to keep pleasing them and they know it um the other thing is and a lot of people will resist this but 
if you are somebody who puts a lot of value on being a really good person, you are going to find that unconsciously, perhaps, maybe not unconsciously, you are going to seek out people who on some level you can think of as selfish or the bad person, the bad guy, because by default, it makes you the good guy or the good person. I know it's really hard to hear and you may be thinking, oh, she was on my side <laughs> until just now. I'm still on your side. I'm on everybody's side. Um, I'm just trying to lay out the facts and you can do with them what you want. So how can you stop attracting so many narcissists? All right, number one, know yourself, right? You know, if you tend to attract people who are super self-absorbed, that's the first most important step. And think about the things that I've mentioned, which of these applies to you? Um, and, and be honest, right? Even if it smarts a little bit. Um, think, when you think about that, right? Even if you only have one significant narcissist in your life, think about the other relationships. You may have had a parent who is super self-absorbed, even if they were the quote, best mother or best father. Um, you know, you may have felt like, you know, everything seemed fine on the surface, but underneath you didn't really, something just didn't feel great or you never felt great about yourself. If that's the case, please do go seek treatment with um, a counselor who can help you to understand your patterns better and help you to feel better about who you are and take better care of you. Um, ask yourself, what would the healthiest, most loving path be for me? And it can be in a specific moment. Maybe it's to say no, or I'll have to think about it, or that's not true. I didn't do that. You did. Um or maybe it's to reevaluate your relationships and some you may just say, I don't know if I can do this or I need a break or I need to change the parameters in some way. Um, understand the difference between being a caring person and, and toxic caregiving. Toxic caregiving isn't really good for the other person, even if they think it is, and it's not great for you. Um, caregiving that leaves you feeling frustrated and resentful or worse, it's toxic. Um, practice mindfulness because mindfulness helps us all to be more centered and more self-aware. And um, you can consider using something like guided imagery or meditations that help you to build up your self-esteem, right? So that you remember that you have inherent worth, you are important, you can still be a good person by making decisions, even if other people don't love or agree with every decision you make. Um, so I hope these tips are helpful. And I want to let you know how much I appreciate your listening. I'm so happy that you tuned in. I hope this can help you take even better care of you so you can feel better, do better, and live better in general. And until next time, this has been another episode of Unpacking Possibility. You can listen on um, Apple Music and Spotify and Amazon Music and all of your favorite, favorite streaming platforms. And please do comment, share, like, follow. It really does help me continue bringing good content to you. And until next time, I wish you all the very best. Hey, you're still here. Well, it's Tracy Stein. I've just got one more quick thing that I thought might be helpful. If this podcast episode resonated with you and you seem to be attracting more than your fair share of narcissists and you don't really want to, um, I've got a few audio programs that I created that are available through Hay House. And I believe they may be on Audible as well. And each of these guided hypnotic imagery audio programs the meditations, the exercises, they can help you make the inner shifts you need to make to affect important outer changes. So the first one is letting go of unhealthy relationships. Now the title might be a little misleading because yes, it does help you get into the mental space to let go of unhealthy relationships if letting go completely is what you really need to do. But it also emphasizes things like letting go of unhealthy patterns that you may have that may have led you to attract people who are more about them and less about you. 
And it also is good for just learning how to set healthy limits. The second set of um, albums, actually, because it's two, is healthy self-esteem and healthy self-esteem during sleep. And the latter album helps you to take in positive suggestions at a deeper level for feeling better about yourself while also getting deeper, more restorative sleep. And then the third kind of set is um, healthy self-compassion and self-compassion during sleep. Again, hypnotic suggestions to help you make the inner shifts to help you really feel better, do better, live better from the inside out. So anyway, they're available through Hay House. You may want to check them out. And either way, as always, I wish you all the very best. Be well.